and this shape isn't an omnipresent, shapeless being. It also shows that Jesus Christ is the exact duplicate of God the Father. To see one is to see the other. Any denial of a physical resemblance is merely biased due to obscuring the pure biblical message with the filter of Greek philosophy. If Jesus Christ and God the Father are both perfect, are equal, and they look exactly alike, God the Father must also have an immortal body. As the Son is, the Father is also. What the Son has, the Father has also. Whatever God was, the Son is exactly like Him. Jesus is the mirror image, including the physical reflection of God the Father. Their outward appearance is similar to that of identical twins. To see one is to see the other. Now, in the Hebrew Old Testament, when mankind was made in the image of God, the Hebrew word tselem means an image or a copy or a form. It's found 17 times in the Old Testament. It is always discernible with boundaries and dimensions. Its discernible nature isn't negated even when it is used abstractly or representatively as far as that goes. The Hebrew word zelem refers to a three-dimensional image or form. Man is created in the image of God after the likeness, the demut. The Hebrew word demut, the likeness, the shape, the pattern, the figure, the form, it, it has various connotations there. This is found 25 times in the Old Testament. And only Psalm 58.4 uses demut, differing from a literal observant image which is discernible. All the other 24 appearances of this word demut in the Old Testament, the Hebrew word, is referring to the exterior appearances of something which is discernible, and it's used in relation to objects and beings, regardless of their materiality. So this, this gets very interesting also. This similitude, the similitude between man and God, is primarily refers to man's body, although of course the spiritual is not thereby excluded. Modern man will probably object to this explanation by claiming that God has no shape at all, as he is purely spiritual being. Now see, we've seen that Norman Geisler has shown that the soma pneumaticos, the spiritual body, the spiritual being, is completely material. It's just immortal and imperishable. Spiritual being is not opposite of physical being. This is very crucial to comprehend here. Both, but such an incorporeal idea of God demands a power of abstraction that is beyond the reach of ancient Israel. And it is, too. It's attained only by Greek philosophy. There's the culprit again and again. And it is Greek philosophy that entered into the Trinitarian creeds wholly and unabashedly they forgot the concept of revelation and adapted philosophy to explain the relationship of Jesus with God the Father and with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. God is conceived as a human being, albeit many times more powerful and dreadful. The Old Testament writers in general seem to have thought of God not as a formless spirit, but of having a form that can be seen. This is the idea be behind Numbers 12 and verse 8. And all the probability is that this form was supposed to be the same as man's own form. So there's no objection to taking the statement to refer primarily to man's bodily form. See, God must therefore have something like an image or a likeness of his own. This is the idea, yeah. And what is that form? This is why B.H. Roberts was saying, we go to Jesus Christ as the master key, the end-all, be-all of any argument about the nature and form of God, whether it's through philosophy or through the scripture. Jesus Christ is the final revelation 
of God. This image of God is taken literally in mankind through Christ, of course. He revealed the Father, the type and kind of being the Father is. Absolutely. There's no question here. James 3, 9. Now this is interesting. Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude, the homoiosis of God. The similitude. 1 Corinthians 11, 7. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as much as he is the image, and again, this is the Greek, ver- the Greek term icon, mankind is the image and glory of God, but the woman is the glory of the man. Again, 1 Corinthians 15, 47 through 49, the first man is of the earth, earthly, the second man is the Lord from heaven. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy, and as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. And then this is really interesting at Romans 8.29. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed. The Greek word here is sumorphos. We are conformed to the image of his son, the icon, again, the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Colossians 3.10 And have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge, after the image of him that created him. Again, the Greek term icon, the image of him that created him. What is the image of man? In the image of God. What is God? God is an immortal, glorified man. You want proof? I present Jesus the Christ. Just like B.H. Roberts did. The Bible presents Jesus the Christ also. And Philippians 3, 10, and then verse 21. Now this is good. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable. Now, this Greek word, conformable, sumofu, unto his death. Who shall change? The Greek is the metaschematizo. Our vile body that it may be fashioned, that is the sumorphos, like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. We shall be like him. There is passage after passage after passage in the New Testament, the LDS scriptures, and the Old Testament, showing that the glorified Jesus has a material body, and if that is true, so does God the Father. There isn't any doubt. The Bible describes God to be in anthropomorphic form, and it describes a material God. So thank you for joining me in these Backyard Professor podcast series. I certainly enjoy making them. I enjoy having you along for the ride and for the listen. I'll see you next time on the podcast. Remember... Always remember, have a great week.